What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So this will be part four of the Jeepers Creepers 5 train story that I've been te telling over the past four months. Shout out to you, Alistair, for sending me more of this story. You were still cooking. And we're going to keep this up until we get to the very end because a lot of you seem to have been enjoying those videos. Now, for those of you who, because it's been a while since I've done a continuation of this, I made a playlist with the other three videos. I'll leave a link to it in the description and in the comment section. I did also share it over in the community tab this morning for anyone that wanted to catch up before they watch this video because you might be lost because we're just going to jump right back into where I left off on my third video. Please check out that playlist. And for those of you who have been waiting for this, let's get on into it. So in Pertola County, the two police officers who found the missing woman's smartphone at a gas station pull over at the diner that Bucky visited. The driver named Thompson and his colleague Erling have been sent to check on the staff and customers who locked themselves in following a coyote attack. They find the diners in complete darkness with the entrance doors left wide open. Drawing out their guns and flashlights, the two nervously step inside and look around. There's no one there. The only thing they find are several handbags and smartphones, some smartphones on some tables. Thompson goes into the kitchen and finds evidence of a disturbance, but the back doors are locked. He wonders if they hurried out to catch the last bus service that comes through here. Erling says if that's the case, why would they leave their belongings behind? They contact their sergeant about the situation. The sergeant tells them about a missing train that was meant to arrive in Poho and orders them both to head over to a specific area to investigate. Whilst driving down a highway, Bucky sees the wreckage of a car in the valley. Pulling over, he approaches and sees the vehicle has slashed tires and smashed windows with no one inside. He shines his light and notices the rest of the car has no visible damage. The bonnet appears untouched. Billy and Erica walk over. Bucky tells them there's nothing right about this or there's something not right about this. He says this car seems to have been dumped out here, not crashed. Billy notices there's traces of shattered glasses several feet away. While Bucky and Erica inspect it, Erica suddenly hears a rustling sound coming from some nearby trees. She cautiously walks over to have a look and spots a pair of car keys beside the tree. As she bends over to pick them up, a black hooded figure suddenly appears from behind and grabs hold of her with their hand over her mouth. She momentarily struggles and tries to break free before being dragged away into the darkness. Billy turns around and suddenly realizes Erica has disappeared. The two run around the area and repeatedly call for her. Billy frantically tries to see any sign of her anywhere but can't. He shouts her name so hard that it echoes around the valley. Only silence follows. Billy explains to Bucky about what happened back on the train about the creeper trying to take her. Bucky says if she's been taken by the creeper, there's nothing they can do for her. Meanwhile, on the same highway, officers Thompson and Erling are heading over to investigate the missing train. They receive a call from a patrol officer who says he found a burning train carriage and a dead body in the valley. An unidentified male with a severe broken neck. The two officers see a parked, see a car parked on the side of the highway. They look out at the fields and see something. It's the rest of the train, the two carriages. They see the lights inside are dimly lit. As they walk across the field, they see no sign of anyone on board. They climb through the window that Louis smashed. They find several bags, suitcases, and equipment on the floor, including Billy's backpack, but no sign of anyone. Erling spots a figure in the other carriage. They move very quietly past the door and find a man kneeling down with his back to them. They see him holding a weapon of some kind in his hand. It's the creeper's hunting knife that Billy threw at it. Thompson tells the man to drop the weapon, slowly raise his hands and stand up. The man complies and turns around to face them. The two officers recognize him as Jules, the reported missing husband and friend of Jack Taggart. They lower their guns and ask him what he's doing out here. He explains that he was heading to Bertwilla, and while he was driving down the highway, he witnessed a train traveling in the wrong direction. The train came to a sudden stop, and he heard horrific screams. He saw the passengers trying to get off with these shadows when the shadows appeared over the train, and it felt silent. He came over and found no one on board. It was as if the passengers vanished into thin air. Thompson explains that people have been disappearing all over Poho. Jewel says the police in the county know as well as he does what's going on. He says he was recently contacted by a local woman, Giselle Gay Hartman. The two officers are very familiar with that name. She told him a friend of his is in danger and needs help. He has to go to Petrilla and save his friend. He has to try. Thompson tells Jules that they'll go with him. Billy and Bucky arrive at the Taggart farm and see a burning vehicle on the property. They get closer and see several dead bodies lying about. 
Bucky draws his gun and gives Billy a flashlight. The pair approach on foot and find the Taggart's task force massacred. Billy runs to the farmhouse and calls for his father and grandfather, but there's no response. He enters the barn and finds the post puncher torn apart with no sign of his grandfather. He shines the flashlight up and sees a huge hole in the wall where the creeper's torso once hung. Above it, signs saying, Bat out of hell. Billy hears a soft, vulnerable sound near him. He looks around and finds the family Labrador hiding in the corner. Shaking and whimpering, Billy comforts the dog while Bucky inspects the massacre team. Their bodies have puncture wounds and broken limbs. Some even have missing limbs. One of the bodies suddenly moves. Bucky looks closer and realizes one of the men one of the men is alive. It's Jack Jr. He is badly wounded and barely conscious. Jack tries to speak, but Bucky tells him not to, promising to get him help. He shouts for Billy, who comes running over to the barn, running out of the barn anyway. Billy is distressed at seeing the state of his father, but Bucky assures him his father will be okay, but they need to get him to the nearest hospital right now. He asks Billy if he found Jack Sr., but Billy shakes his head. He says he found the family dog in the barn, but his grandfather is gone. The two share a silent moment together before carrying Jack to the car and gently placing him in the back seat. Billy brings the dog into the car too before they depart. They start driving down a main road when an off-road vehicle appears in front of them. It stops in the middle of the road, blocking their way. Bucky steps out, armed with his gun. Several Native American men step out the vehicle and address Bucky by his name. They, they ask him if there were any survivors at the farm. Bucky says only one, Jack Taggart's son. They offer to take Jack to their home so that the family doctor can treat him. When he asks him if they know what happened back there, a woman is heard telling Bucky, we all know what happened back there. She walks forward and Bucky recognizes her. It's Trisha Jenner. He realizes she was the one who phoned him back at the house. Trisha confesses to it and promises Bucky she will answer his questions, but right now they need to get Jack to the family doctor. Now I'm gonna stop there because there is more to this. It's just very long of a post that Alistair has provided me with. I'm gonna keep breaking this down in the videos for you guys to enjoy over the course of the foreseeable future if this is all we have to talk about when it comes to Jeepers Creepers. Alistair, my man, you are still cooking. The story is amazing. You are starting to bring in legacy characters. You've been relying on newbie characters in a very promising way. You've gotten people enticed with it. The Creeper still has not been on screen very much. You're all, all of this stuff that you're doing, it's very impressive. It's stuff that we would all love to see in an inevitable fifth movie if it were to come to life. And it's really a shame that this isn't the story that they gave us for a proper third film, since this is actually what should have been three, then we thought it should have been four. Now some of us hope it'll end up being five, if five ever sees the light of day. You guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.